Check this out. Perfect consistency. I'm going to take a bite. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how to make a gluten-free vegan pumpkin pie. Before we start, if you're interested in following me on my journey towards a happier, healthier, and freer life, consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be notified on upcoming videos. Also, as some of you may know, I've started a collection of cold weather scarves, especially designed to comfort those with sensitive skin. So if you find scarves scratchy, check out freeandcat.com. Let's make pumpkin pie. A lot of gluten-free and vegan pumpkin pie recipes uses ingredients such as oatmeal, almond meal, or cornstarch. This recipe doesn't use any of them. And if you can't have cashews, the good news is it's optional. Let's get started. Here's 12 grams of ground flax seeds, also known as flax meal. Add 30 ml of water, mix, and set aside for 10 minutes. In a large bowl, mix 180 grams of cassava flour, 15 grams of arrowroot starch, and a quarter teaspoon salt. I'm using Himalayan salt here, but table salt would work as well. Cut 140 grams of cold vegan shortening into half inch cubes. If you're not vegan, you can substitute it with cold lard or cold butter. Then add the cubes into the dry flour mix. Using a pastry cutter, cut into the shortening and flour mix until it resembles very coarse sand. Drizzle one tablespoon of white distilled vinegar Use a spatula to press and fold in the flour mixture into the vinegar. Vinegar helps with flakiness. You won't smell or taste it after the pie is baked. Then, fold in the flax egg. Mix in the cold water, one tablespoon at a time. Add in only enough water so that the flour mix can form a dough ball. I used about 5 tablespoons, but this will vary depending on the brand of cassava flour you use. Here's some cling wrap. Let's shape the dough into a circular disc about 1 inch thick. Then wrap it with cling wrap and let it rest for 15 minutes. While waiting, prepare 2 sheets of parchment paper larger than the diameter and the height of your pie pan. This one is an 8.5 inch pie pan, but depending on how high your pie crust is, this dough should be enough to cover a 9-inch pan as well. 15 minutes have passed. Lay down one sheet of parchment paper, unwrap your dough and place it in the center. Cover the dough with the second sheet of parchment paper. Then using a rolling pin, loosen the dough by pressing it down a few times. Then roll out the dough into a circle larger than the diameter and height of your pie pan. In terms of thickness, it should be about 1 8 to 1 quarter inch thick. This dough is very forgiving, so you can fill in the cracks to shape it into a circle. Don't worry about perfection here, as we will likely have to make adjustments while fitting it into the pie pan later. I'm folding this square piece of parchment paper in order to cut out a circle to line the bottom of my pie pan. Back to the rolled out dough, remove the top piece of parchment paper. Invert your pie pan with the parchment lining over the dough. Then gently and quickly flip it over so that the pie dough is now sitting on the pie pan. Carefully remove the remaining parchment paper. Then adjust the pie dough to fit the pan. If the dough breaks, it's okay. You can press it back in. Once the dough is nicely fitted into the pan, we're going to take a knife to cut off the excess. In today's case, I'm going to collect the excess dough, roll it out again, and make a second smaller pie crust. Cover the pie crust with cling wrap to prevent it from drying out. Refrigerate it for 30 minutes or until the filling is ready. We are going to bake a pumpkin pie pumpkin, sometimes known as a sugar pumpkin. If you prefer, you can skip this step and substitute it with unsweetened canned pumpkin pie puree, the kind that only has one ingredient, pumpkin. This pumpkin has been rinsed and pat dry. Cut the stem off, then cut it into half, remove the seeds, sprinkle with salt, and then place it skin side up on a parchment paper lined baking tray. Bake it in the preheated 400 Fahrenheit oven for 30 minutes 
or until you can easily poke a toothpick through it. Our pumpkin is ready. Carefully remove the skin and let it cool. Alright, let's make our pie filling. In the blender, add 80 milliliters of water. Note, we're going to add in cashews later. If you don't want to use cashews in this recipe to make it nut-free, substitute this water with 80 milliliters of unsweetened canned coconut milk. Add in 1 tablespoon of white distilled vinegar, 80 milliliters of maple syrup, half teaspoon of pure vanilla extract, 1 teaspoon of avocado oil or any unflavored oil, 50 grams of raw unsalted cashews, 15 grams of arrowroot starch, 20 grams of cassava flour, half teaspoon of baking soda, one and a half teaspoon of ground cinnamon, half teaspoon of ginger powder, a quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg, quarter teaspoon of salt, and around 800 grams of the sugar pumpkin we baked. Blend until smooth. You may need a blender temper to push down the ingredients to achieve that smooth pumpkin pie filling. If you substitute cashews and water with coconut milk, it's probably much easier to blend. Alright, our pumpkin pie filling is ready. So let's transfer this mixture into a bowl and set aside. Which is better, to blind bake the pie crust or not to blind bake? Since I have two pie crusts today, I'm going to show you both. Stay tuned to the end of the video to find out which one tastes better. Let's bake the larger pie crust first, with the filling in it. Preheat the oven to 400 Fahrenheit. Here's our chilled pie crust, add in the filling, and bake 10 minutes in the preheated oven. Then, reduce the temperature to 350 Fahrenheit, and continue to bake for another 35 minutes, or until the pie is golden and set. Now, for the smaller pie, we're going to blind bake it. Preheat the oven to 425 Fahrenheit. Once the oven is preheated, poke some holes into the chilled pie crust, then bake it for 10 minutes. We want the pie crust to be as chilled as possible before baking, that way the shortening doesn't melt when it's in the oven. Here's what the pie crust looks like after blind baking for 10 minutes. Add in the filling and continue to bake at 375 Fahrenheit for another 30 minutes. The two pies are baked. But they're not ready yet. We've got to let the pies cool down first, then set in the fridge overnight or at least for 4 hours. Okay, 12 hours have passed. Our pies are ready. I'm going to try them and see which one tastes the best. This is the pie without blind baking. This is the blind baked pie. Both pies taste really good. The filling is perfect, not overly sweet and not mushy at all. I would say the main difference in the two pies is the pie that wasn't blind baked, the bottom crust has a mild feel of a dense cake, whereas the blind baked pie, the crust at the bottom is crispier. Personally, I prefer the blind baked version. But try out this recipe and let me know in the comments below how it goes and which version you prefer. So this is how I make gluten-free vegan pumpkin pie. The full printable recipe can be found on my website at sensitiveskinlifestyle.com. Just search gluten-free vegan pumpkin pie. The link is in the description box below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you again soon.